okay hello and welcome back to the class in today's lecture we are going to understand how to make this toy monitor okay by reading this 2d drawing completely in 3d inside siemens nx okay so hang on with the video and please follow along so that you can understand how we can make this kind of product now the first part of making any 2d drawing or you know converting any 2d drawing to 3d is to understand how exactly the things are created and how exactly the drawings are being laid out so here we can see there are different indication like 12x 4x so that is basically the number of uh, fillets which has been created for example here there are 12 fillets of radius 2 then there are 4 fillets of radius 3.5 and this is how exactly this has been shown for example here also you can see there are 4 fillets of radius 2 okay so this is how everything has been detailed out okay so accordingly we have to decide how exactly we need to you know define the radius define the parameters and everything so in this particular video we are going to understand how to make this particular part now this is quite a complex one so let us try to make this first of all now i'm going to take it real slow and try to make it in a easiest way possible now we know the overall length and width of this particular box or the tv unit or we can say a toy monitor is 100 by 100 so first of all what we are going to do is we are going to start with a new part file inside nx now make sure you define a proper location where you want to save the file and also the proper name if you wish to save the file in a proper way now what we are going to do next is once we started with the file we are going to create a sketch and I want to create a sketch let's say on the front plane or basically you can say the exact plane so here you can select the exact plane or the front plane and then you can click OK now once you are in the sketch then you can define what kind of sketch you want to create so I want to start with a line a line of length 100 so here I am starting with a line of length 100 now once the line is ready then we need to decide what next we need to make now the next thing what I am planning to make is this arc now here we can see in the front we have a length of 12 in the back we have a length of 22 and the arc which is created is of radius 125 so let us try to make that so in the front we have a smaller line in the back we have a longer line the front the length is of 12 in the back the length is of 25 and then we have an arc from this point to this point okay we have an arc like this which will have a radius of 125 so here I am defining a radius of 125 so as we can notice just to reconfirm this is 22 and 12 not 25 and 12 so I'll just make it 22 and 12 and 125 okay now once we are done with this kind of sketch I can click on finish and choose to extrude this now I want to extrude it only with a length of 50 okay with a start value of 0 okay so start distance of 0 and distance of 50 I'm not extruding it with uh, the overall length of 100 uh, there is a reason for that okay now here in boolean it is set to none the draft and everything is uh, the default options are set okay now this is something which we are looking at now what we need to do is from the side we can see clearly that it is having a curved radius of 50 at a height of 28 okay so here also we have a height of 28 so if you want to really define the height of 28 also you can define that but yeah we know that uh, on the side we have a radius of 50 and for that radius of 55 mm i believe is the state portion which has been mentioned over here so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on sketch. I'm going to create a sketch on the default top plane and here on this side, extremely this side, I'm going to create a vertical line. Okay. And then I'm going to create finally an arc, something like this, making sure the arc is tangent to the line at least. Okay. And this is how this is going to look like. So here, this is of length phi and the radius of this arc is going to be 50. And the height of this arc is going to be 28 so let us define that parameter as well okay now once everything has been defined properly then what i can do is i can click on finish and then i can click on extrude now because i'm creating an open sketch okay what we can technically do is we can define this with a height of 100 and if i want i can activate this option called open profile smart volume and i can flip the cut okay and here i have to make sure i have selected subtract and i can flip the cut to the other side okay so you can see using this arrow I can actually flip the cut to any side I want just by using an open sketch so this is something which we have created so far now what I'll do I'll hide my sketch okay and this is something which we have done now if you want you can right now mirror the geometry it's as it is okay or else you can first define the fillet and everything and then try to mirror the geometry okay so to define the fillet we can clearly see there are four of radius 2 so that means all four corners of radius 2 so I can only create two of them and here it is mentioned there are 12 of radius 2 
Okay, but the problem here is the 12 of radius 2 is not really possible because here we have only 4 and 4, 8. So this 4 on the top is also of radius 2. So what I'll do, I'll define edge blend with the radius of 2, okay, with tangent curve option selected here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So this whole sides, I'm going to define the radius of 2. Okay, once I mirror this, then I can, you know, we will have more uh, radiuses over there. So once I've done with this part, I can go to more and I can choose mirror geometry. Then I can select the geometry itself. Then I can choose the mirror plane. Mirror plane is going to be this one. And I can click OK. Now once the mirror is completed, I can simply hide my sketch, the first element here. And then I can use unite to unite the two geometries together. So this is how this particular part is going to look like. Now once this particular part is ready, then what we can do next is, I can now create the back portion. Now to create a back portion, we can clearly see there is a line here, which will help me to create the back portion uh, correctly. So here this line is starting from 20 from this side, okay, as we can notice over here and 60 from this side. So we know the location of the line, we do know the angle of the line and we do know the uh, height of the line over here, that is 60. So let's just try to make that line first. So I'm going to create a sketch again on the exact plane or the front plane. Okay, so XZ or the front plane is where I'm going to create my sketch. I'm going to create a line like this. Now, first of all, I'm going to define the dimensions here. So line is from the bottom, it's at a distance of 20. Then again, uh, we need to make sure from where we are defining all the dimensions from here to here. So rapid dimension from here to the origin, this gap is going to be 60. Okay, then from the top line, okay, uh, the top side line, and this line is going to have an angle of 20. Finally, we have to give one more dimension that is 60 over here. So that is a dimension of this point to this point, And that is going to be 60. So now I have created a line which is a fully constrained sketch. Now I can finish my sketch and then decide what we need to create next. Now for the next part, what we're going to do is we are going to create a box of 50 by 40. So as we can see, and exactly at the very end of this line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my body itself, the main body. I'm going to create a sketch okay, uh, on the path. And this is going to be my path. I'm going to create a sketch extremely on this side. Make sure the orientation is like this. Z is pointing towards the line. X and Y is somewhat, somewhat like this. And then what we're going to do is we are going to create a rectangle. The center of the rectangle is going to be at the center of uh, or at the origin over here. This is going to be 50 by 40. So I've defined my sizes. Now I'll click on finish. In a similar way, I need to create one more sketch on the other side of the path. Again, make sure that it is in the correct direction. Now in this side of the path, okay, what I need to do is I need to create one more sketch of 60 by 65. So let, let us try to make that as well. So here I'm creating a corner rectangle, selecting the midpoint of the top uh, line of the corner rectangle and selecting the origin, making it coincident. This is going to be 65, the length, and this is going to be 60, the width. Now, once we have defined with uh, the creation of these two objects, the best way of combining the two objects here is going in the surface tab and searching for the command called ruled. Okay, this will be the best way of connecting the two objects in a easiest manner. Because this particular command doesn't have any options, you know, for connection. So here you can simply click on ruled. Now, once I click on ruled command here in section one, I'm going to select connected curve. This is going to be my section one in section two. Again, I'm going to select connected curve. Okay. Here preserve shape should be on. If you don't know why preserve shape is important. Okay. You have to see the sweep series in which I have already explained you preserve shape here in alignment. I have also explained the alignment part, the, what is parameter arc length and by point in the sweep series as well. So here, once this, this particular part has been defined, I can click. Okay. And this is how this thing can be completed. Okay, the backside unit. Now let us hide all the sketches and show the unite body or the body which was united earlier. And this is how the entire thing is going to look like. Now what's, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unite the two bodies together. So I'm going to click on home tab, unite this body with this one and I'm going to click okay. Now I'm going to define a radius of two, uh, radius of two again on all of these edges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Okay, so 8 over here, 4 over here and 4 over here. 
so total of 12 and you know some number of radius has been there then a radius of 3.5 on the contact area so here again a radius of 3.5 tangent curve on this contact area i'm going to click okay so this is how the entire geometrical structure of this particular part is going to look like now next thing what i'm going to do is finally before i create a shell a shell thickness is of 1 mm okay for your information it is given over here now before i create a shell i need to create a cavity of 20 by 10 on the back side which is a depth of 5 and rounded all the corners of 1 mm okay so it's 20 by 10 okay it's 5 mm from here 5 mm from here depth of 5 so let us try to make that okay and let us see from where 5 mm exactly it is from the outer side of the blend okay not from the inner side so what i'll do i'll start with a sketch okay this time on a plane on this face i'll make a corner rectangle from this corner somewhat like this i'll make sure the distance from this side till here is 5 and the distance from this side till there is 5 the length is 20 by 10 i'll click on finish i'll click on extrude i don't want the extrude to come this side i'll reverse it give it a depth of 5 and i'll click ok now my cavity is ready now what i need to do with this cavity is i'm going to you know edge blend all the corners with a radius of one so here i'm defining one over here one over here one over here one in all the bottom edges okay so defining one on all the bottom edges and also on the top edges so radius one has been defined for all the edges over here now once the fillet has been defined finally what we can do is we can simply go and use shell okay to make it hollow now before you do that uh, i can see clearly some part of the body is coming outside so to correct this you can go to unite command okay you can click on define regions you can click on remove and you can remove this region okay this is the easiest way or you can also go to delete face command and then delete that particular set of faces now here if i click on shell i'll give a thickness of one and i'll select this face and i'll click ok so this is how the actual monitor itself is going to look like so i hope you understood how exactly this kind of you know stuff can be created this kind of geometry can be created easily inside nx okay and got a clear idea about how to read this kind of drawings as well so thank you very much for watching have a great day